Welcome to Electro Online. One of the most useful theorems in all of physics is the parallel axis theorem. And of course, it's specifically useful for the moment of inertia. What the theorem says is that if you know the moment of inertia of an object when it rotates about its center mass, you can then find the moment of inertia for that same object rotating about any other point a distance d away from the center mass. So here, simply illustrated, let's say we have a solid disk. It's rotating about its center mass right here. We know that the moment of inertia of a solid disk is 1 half mr squared. But now we want to know the moment of inertia at a different point, a distance d away from the center of mass. Well, all we have to do is simply take the moment of inertia at the center mass, which is 1 half mr squared, and then we add to that the mass of the object times the distance we moved away from the center mass squared. That's it. And it works for every situation, which to me is always kind of amazing. It's almost like magic. Wow, how did that work? But it works. It's a very handy and very simple theorem. So let's show you some, let's show some examples. Let's say we have a thin rod and we know that it rotates about its center mass. Then of course the center mass, the moment of inertia about the center mass is 1 12th ml squared. We already know that from our previous videos. So what happens now when we move that point to a different point, let's say at the very end. Now, of course, we already know what the moment of inertia is, but let's see if we get that equation when we apply the parallel axis theorem. So the equation goes that the total moment of inertia is the moment of inertia at the center mass, which is 1 12th ml squared, plus m times the distance we moved squared. Now, the distance we moved would be half the length of the rod, so it's mass times half the length squared. Of course, half the length squared is 1 quarter ml squared. We add that to 1 12th, and sure enough, when we add it up, we get 1 third ml squared. And we know that is correct, of course. So you see, like magic, simply used, and it gives you the new moment of inertia. So let's apply it now to a solid disk. Here we have a solid disk rotating about its center mass. Therefore, the moment of inertia is 1 half ml squared. But what if we move it a distance d? In this case, d is half the distance of the radius. Well, we take the moment of inertia at the center mass plus the mass times the distance we moved squared, r over 2 squared becomes 1 quarter r squared. Add them together, we get 3 quarters mr squared. What if we move the full radius? What's the moment of inertia of the disk rotating about its edge like that? Well, the moment of inertia at the center mass plus the mass times the distance moved. In this case, the distance is equal to r, so it's mr squared. Add it together, you get 3 halves mr squared. What if we move the distance twice the radius? Okay, again, we take the moment of inertia at the center mass plus the mass times the distance moved, in this case 2r, we get 4r squared, added together 9 halves mr squared. It's as simple as that. And so there you can see that that theorem is a very handy and easy to apply theorem. Now, of course, there are some more complicated examples that we might encounter. We'll show you those on the next video.